Hello and welcome to Paranormal United States. This is episode 43 and this is Texas. Yeah, and we are going to southeast Texas to a place known as the Big Thicket. Okay. T-H-I-C-K-E-T, which is the name of a heavily forested area deep in the heart of southeast Texas. Cool. The Thicket is once over a million acres in size, according to some estimates. Compromised of dense woodlands described as a convergence of eastern hardwood forests, prairies, and the Gulf Coastal Plains. This is before the lumber and oil industries reduced the thicket to a patchwork of its former self. The region was composed of dense vegetation, populated by bears, wolves, panthers, and a remarkable variety of unique plants. It was also a perfect place to hide. Although criminals and scofflaws used the thicket to escape local law enforcement, Throughout the region's early history of Anglo settlement, the thicket's most renowned fugitives were Confederate deserters during the Civil War. Soldiers wanting to avoid the battle took to the woods, living off the land, often trading goods to locals while evading authority, which was never a popular entity in the thicket. No one liked the sheriffs or anyone being around there. No. In order to flush out suspected deserters, the local Confederate army would set fire to the thicket in an attempt to drive them from the hiding places and out into the open. This wasn't an easy task, considering the size and density of the thicket itself. Fugitives weren't the only spectres haunting the environment, however. Tales of swamp ghosts and spirits populate Big Thicket law, including the mystery light of Bragg Road. Ooh. Near to Saratoga, the ghost light, also known as the Big Thicket Ghost Light, or the Saratoga Light, is said to appear along a dirt road running through the thicket, swaying to and fro in the hands of a spirit railroad worker, decapitated on the railroad tracks, which used to run over the road in the early 20th century. Wow. The rails were taken up in 1934, it was after this that the ghost lights began their appearances. So it's a little bit similar to the Hesdalen lights. Yeah. Um, and it's been seen in different colours. It appears like advanced and recede, according to Wim. The light seems to approach almost close enough to decipher to see what it is before it seems to retreat and rise up or disappear in the night sky if someone gets too close to it. So you can never get like really close to it. You can get pretty close. As soon as you get too close, it just goes up and disappears. Oh, wow. The light, which has been known to change colour from white to yellow and even to red or green, has also been known to come very close to cars driving down the road, even skimming over the hood of the car. Oh, wow. The local community has leaned into the legend, even erecting informative plaques and renaming a portion of the road, Ghost Road Scenic Drive. <laughs> At several points during the 1980s and 1990s, the local government put forward proposals to cut timber on the road, which were blocked by the citizens who wanted to maintain the integrity of the ghost road. As with many other ghost light sites, several attempts have been made to debunk the lights as car headlights or even the swamp gas from the surrounding swamps. I think in this picture, you can see the swamp land. Yeah, it's going throughout a lot of the uh, the thicket. However, these attempts are at best inconclusive, and the legend is still quite robust in the community compared to some other spook lights that have lost popularity mm -hmm. in the last couple of decades. Research by Japan's Yoshihiko Atsuki, professor of physics at the Waseda University of Tokyo, found that in Harding County, which encompasses Big Thicket. Around 80 per 1,000 people have seen a fireball. This is what oh. he calls the light, a fireball. That's a lot of people. Yeah, so that's 80 in 1,000 compared to the worldwide average of just one in 1,000. So a huge amount oh. more are seeing strange lights. That makes this area one of, if not the most, popular area to see a fireball or ball lightning in the loop could be. Because he also heads up a sort of scientific ball lightning research group. Okay. And there's another area in Texas 
and that's had similar sort of lights being seen, and again, similar to Hess Darling. But obviously the topography of Big Thicket isn't the same, whereas there you've got the, the valleys and the mountains, yeah. which is but it's the whole geographic. Obviously it's a forest, it doesn't have the mountains. So even though we're getting sort of similar reports, the geography is different, so it sort of can't be the same thing. Mm. It's sort of the sort of outcome that this professor has, has because he travel all around the world, going to these different places with these lights that get seen. The Big Thicket is also believed to be the home of a Bigfoot or wild man. Robert Riggs, who has been researching Bigfoot since 1979, even moved to the Big Thicket to carry on his search. He said that when he first announced he was to investigate the area, he was inundated with letters from people claiming to have spotted a Bigfoot-like creature in the thicket. In one letter, a teenage girl claimed that a giant ape had chased her away from a cemetery. A couple in a car on Ghost Road, the local lover's lane, reported that Bigfoot jumped on their hood, forcing the man, who fortunately had his shotgun handy, forcing him to scare the creature away by firing at it through the windscreen. Wow. So he must have been scared enough to through the windscreen. <laughs> so he must have been pretty frightened to do that. Yeah. That's to actually shoot for your own car's windscreen. <laughs> so they they must have seen something. Definitely. Rick has concluded that there's at least one large hairy beast walking around the thicket. And although he hasn't seen one himself, he has heard a very loud howl when camping overnight. And his next aim is to get his own photograph of the creature. And he set up trail cams and mounted cameras, as well as setting up bait near to his camper, which is on the edge of the thicket, which he moved to fairly recently. So that's just a couple of the strange things going on in the thicket. There's also been reports of ghosts, spirits, disembodied voices. Wow. People hear someone walking nearby, but when they look, there's no one there. So there's, and it's weird because it was used to be just be like a big massive forest, but now there's like yeah. around a dozen different areas of like smaller pockets mm-hmm. of the forest, and it's like been built up in between them. Okay. And like those little, little villages and stuff. So it's a little bit weird because it's not all just one yeah. place, it's separated a little bit. Do you think though, some of the noises that you hear could just be, they could be a real person, but just sort of echoing around a little bit so you can't quite place it i'm not saying that is but because it's that kind of environment with trees and and stuff it may be yeah yeah could be of course and a hairy man could be a hairy man could be going for a walk in the woods <laughs> yeah could be <laughs> could be uh, but, but the the ghost lights is the interesting mm. interesting bit and it's been seen for, for decades and it's not the first time that we've talked about like a, a light that appears to be from like a train or from a work on a train. Mm. Um, we've talked about that before and on a particular sort of road in the US, similar type of things. Yeah, that's the um, the Moonville Tunnel has a, yeah. you know, Ohio's got a, you see like a lantern coming towards you and then yeah. when you get close, it disappears. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, interesting though. I like, I like that. It seems quite a weird place. I don't know if I'd go there. So... It's a bit too much happening, but it's interesting that there's like disembodied voices, lights, Bigfoot type creatures, all mm. in the same sort of high density yeah. of, of paranormal stuff, um, which seems to be coming through more and more. All the different, different sort of different types of activity. So definitely, cool. definitely. So that was Paranormal United States episode forty three, Texas.